<laughs> this time I won't be talking about a Dutch or a Belgian book or a French or a German or whatever. No, no, it's written in the English language. And it's a book that all, it has already been covered by many booktubers, but I think I have something to say. It's about Matrix by Lauren Groff. Matrix talks about, as we all know, about Marie de France, who lived in 1150 till 1215 ish. We don't really know. We don't even really know where she lived exactly. Uh, we don't even really know who she was exactly, but that doesn't matter. So, um, according to, uh, well, it's a fictitious, 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 fictitious story about a true woman that actually has lived, and we know that because she has written a lot of texts. So, but anyhow, uh, according to Lauren Groff, she was very tall, very ugly, and she was too rough on the edges to be uh, an eligible marriage. Victim. <laughs> That's the only word I can go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but hey, that's the way it is. So, uh, <laughs> she was too ugly to be married off, so they sent her away uh, to um, a convent. And that convent was actually a ruin. And uh, she was moping for a very long time, and then she uh, put her act together, got her act together, and uh, she started rebuilding um, the convent and really make it a very prosperous. Pr uh, a rich place. Maybe I should stick to Dutch, but hey, who cares? <laughs> so, uh, prosperous? That's the word! Ha! I think. I hope. Anyway, so she makes it uh, rich and uh, they have an income. Again, they uh, have a lot of land so they can live off the... Uh, they can live off the land but they can also have an... In they also have an income of the people, the tenants, you know? And she even went to uh, the tenants to, to collect the money, which was unheard of. Uh, that wasn't a woman's job, even if she was a nun, nun that was a big no-no. But she did, and she did it in a very, uh, let's say, hmm, yeah, a Marie de France kind of way. You have to read the book. And, but it's quite funny though. <laughs> I didn't realize it the first time, but it was quite funny. And then um, she ha starts having visions, a bit like uh, Hildegard von Bingen. Hildegard von Bingen was her uh, German counterpart, who is even in our parts of the world even better known than Marie de France. Um, Hildegard was also a nun, a mystic, a scholar. And she was mostly known for her songs and her uh, music. And, but Hildegard von Bingen also had visions from God and Marie de France had those too. And Marie de France um, had a vision that she had to build a labyrinth around her um, convent. And uh, that's a bit the story. That's the the story of, of uh, The Matrix. The first time I read this book, I, I thought it was very distant and I didn't have a real connection with Marie de France. Not that it is necessary, but there was a huge distance between the book and me. And when I read it, I gave it three stars the first time. I gave it three stars because it was a meh book. And I really love, I really love historical fiction. 
För det hade ju alltid hänt. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about that book. And when you think about a book long after you've read it, there's a, a tremendous credit to that. Because if you consistently keep turning around that book and in your head and you think, why, why didn't I feel connected to Marie de France? Why, why, what is it? And then the second time uh, I've read it for uh, my international book club. I, uh, I have an international private book club in, in Brussels and it's all, uh, it are all women, but from all parts of the world. So uh, we have uh, people from Finland, we have people from uh, South America, we had somebody from the States, we had um, somebody from Croatia, Zimbabwe. So a lot of different backgrounds. And I thought maybe Matrix is a very good idea to uh, talk about this book. And so I read it the second time and when we came together, we all had very different visions of Marie de France. And that finally opened up the book for me. And first of all, uh, Johanna is, uh, she's a, a Finnish, uh, she was the host of uh, our uh, book club. She is the host of our book club. She said, well, it's the first time in my life that there's a female protagonist that is tall, but too tall. And Johanna is also a very tall woman. And that's already a credit because normally uh, when uh, women are very, um, how should, should you call it, uh, very, uh, heroic they are mostly small and uh yeah and feisty but not marie de france she was tall she was ugly i think lauren groff said at least 10 times at the beginning that she was ugly but damn she was ugly she must have been a cow really <laughs> she wasn't but that was a bit that was the first thing that I realized that, oh my God, this is funny. This is funny. And then uh, it's sort of, you know, when a, a guy writes about a woman, often she, is, she has long hair or uh, beautiful eyes and uh, athletic body. No, no, Marie de France was tall. She had ugly knees and ugly elbows and, and um, she was ugly. So yeah, <laughs> that was the first thing that uh, really came forward. And then the way she described herself and the nuns and how uh, she interacted with the nuns, I didn't realize that at first. They were, they were all, at the beginning, the first time I read it, all those nuns looked alike. There was nobody to root for, I, I thought. But then with all those different comments, you really start to build. It, it really came alive, like the nun that was responsible for the, for the animals. She's hilarious. And then there was a nun uh, that was uh, a bit... Um, dangerous for uh, Marie de France's position and she, Marie de France found a very <laughs> funny way to get rid of her. I will give a spoiler here, but it's just a one tiny little spoiler. So she sends her off and she says, well, you are very, a, a very caring and nurturing person. So I will send you off to our mission uh, for the leopards. <laughs> knowing that when you are exposed to leopards, you will have the same disease. You will die from it eventually. But when you say you're caring and it's your vocation, well, who are you to disagree? <laughs> you know? 
And it's also a very, um, the world that Lauren Graf has created is very um, female oriented. There are very uh, little women, uh, men uh, walking around in the, in, the, in the book. And they are, I don't think there's even one who is given a name. So they are really pushed out of, out of sight. They all are very blurry. They are very out of focus. And what also was very uh, interesting is that um, Marie de France did a lot of things that only men were allowed to do, but because of her height, she could do it. She could pull it off. The only thing that we all found very um, uh, dissatisfying is that Although Marie de France is known as the first female poet of France, a French poet, uh, Lauren Graf barely speaks about her writings. And her writings are actually quite important. Uh, can you imagine that as a writer, you write books and you write, uh, in, in Marie de France's case, 102 fables, and people still know you after 800 years, you must be a very good one, a very good one. And that is all hushed away. So that's why I think it's important to, to talk uh, a, a little bit about Marie de France, who she really was. Not that they know a lot about her. They don't even know where she actually lived. They don't know if she lived in a convent or at the court. But um, she must have been that good that she, her name is still around 800 years later, you know? And she's regarded as the, uh, the first female French poet in history, which is also important. Um, what do we know about her? Well, we know that she uh, wrote in French, well, Old French, in Breton, and in English, she knew Latin and she knew she had access to very uh, important books. So she uh, probably was self-taught. And on the other hand, she thought that her, she knew that she was extremely intelligent and that she was, um, and that her, she thought that her, intelligence was a gift of God, which was unheard of in a very patriarchic society, like the Middle Ages. And, but she gave it a very intelligent twist. She said it was her vocation. It was her vocation to write. It was her obligation to write to God. And what man can argue with that? Nobody can, because if you would argue with that, you would argue with God, you can't do that. So, very smart. So, um, in her poems, you could see a first lingering of feminism, in a way, uh, because in all her stories, or most of her stories, women are lured out of their comfortable homes, or are tricked out of their homes, and they are uh, threatened with rape or are raped. And uh, they all have to um, find a way back themselves. And not, they are not saved by men. They are saved by themselves, which is also a beautiful story to tell. But she was the first and for a long time, the only one who told that kind of stories. So the women, were lured out of their homes by men, raped often, but they saved themselves in the end. And then married some guy, just to be sure that the men uh, wouldn't be offended by the texts. So yeah, um, she was a very hard worker. I'm writing, I've written um, a few things down. So. Um, the first thing she, 
did was uh, translating texts from Latin into in, uh, French and English. And, uh, but that was a way of uh, giving access to uh, texts that were only giving people access to the to texts that were only meant for scholars and monks and people uh, from high society. She wanted to give uh, lower people, uh, well, the plebs like we are, um, um, access to those texts. But then she realized, well, oh, a lot of texts are already uh, translated from the Latin. I will have to find a new angle to get noticed and to be remembered. So she was she had pride, you know, in her work, and um, she um, decided to write down uh, oral um, stories. And she gave them her own twist to them. And uh, she has written also, uh, she did that in her fables and in her lies. Lies, what are lies? Lies are uh, poems that are written to be sung. And she dedicated those lang uh, lies to a noble king. Was that her brother, Henry II? We don't know, because she doesn't say he's a noble. Uh, he's, uh, she would have said, well, uh, these songs and uh, poems are dedicated to Henry II. But hi in history, it's known that Henry II hated poetry and music, culture. And uh, Henry II was married to, haha, a familiar name, Eleanor of Aquitaine. And he had two sons with Eleanor of Aquitaine. And, um, but um, Henry II also had a very open and uh, well-known relationship with uh, Rosamund Clifford. And it was, became so bad that his own two sons uh, rebelled against their father to protect their mother, Eleanor of Aquitaine. That didn't work very well, and Eleanor Aquitaine was locked up for 16 years, I believe. I don't think they threw, he threw her in a dungeon. I think she was uh, uh, sent off to some quarters where she couldn't get out of, but we have been in that situation for two years, so 16 years in the same situation, uh, being being uh, locked up in your own home, it can be an easy thing. So yeah, that was that. Uh, so we don't really know if she meant a noble king. Well, it's dedicated to, to a king, but are you Henry, my brother? Are you noble? That's also a comment to him, you know? And um, that's about it. So she, she wrote those uh, poet, poems and one of the poems she, end, she ends, and that's also my end note, with uh, this, this text. At the conclusion of this work, which I have written and narrated in French, I shall, I shall name myself for posterity. Marie is my name and I am from France. It may be that many writers will claim my work as their own, but I want no one else to attribute it to himself. He who let himself fall into oblivion does a poor job. Cool, huh? So she had a... She was, she was very proud of her work, as she should be, but that was very rare in those... That was unheard of. She was... Yeah, she was the... In a way, I'm, I'm watching uh, season two of Gentleman Jack right, uh, right now, and in a way she was her... She was uh, the Anne Lister of her time, in a way. But at a higher court. It must have been uh, amazing to be around her and uh, she really had uh, respect 
for uh, the lower uh, the lower class she thought that uh, the lower class and, and the peasants were uh, trustworthy uh, noble um, intelligent so she really had a respect for people that didn't have uh, the opportunity to learn to read or to write and uh, that is something uh, to be to have respect for that she did that uh, because it's easy to push off people that you don't know and a world that you don't know so that was uh, also one of the, the things that came out of our book club so yeah I would say read Matrix uh, for a second time if you didn't like it the first time please do you won't regret it it's very well written everybody knows that but there's so much humor and there's so much subtext that you don't get in the first read and with all that you know right now that really happened with Marie de France and how she thought of herself and how she respected herself and how she respected women and how she thought that women should be treated thumbs up read it the second time read it with the knowledge that you have now and you will love that book even more bye bye <laughs>